Welcome to Transformational Pathways, a podcast created by Toastmasters District 46 in the greater New York area, where we share conversations from influencers within the Toastmasters community and people whose lives have positively transformed by walking down the Toastmasters path. Whether you're just getting started in your career, have had recent career changes, or you're navigating different languages, we're here to help you build confidence by discovering new tools, overcoming your fears to find your voice, and engaging in a thriving community. Enjoy today's episode. Hey everyone, this is Chris Decker, your guest host for today's episode of Transformational Pathways, a podcast by Toastmasters District 46. Today, we're going to get you to know your new host, Anu Sainan. She has her own podcast called Heroes of New York. Anu, please tell us a little bit more about yourself and your experience with Toastmasters. Sure, Chris. Thank you so much for having me here. I really look forward to meeting you and the audience through this podcast. Um, Well, I've been with Toastmasters for a while now, since 2017, and the journey has been really very helpful to me. Um, and, you know, two years ago, I started my own podcast uh, during the lockdown. It's called Heroes of New York, as you mentioned. And uh, the idea was to share the stories of people who go out of their way to help others in their neighborhood. And uh, stories are at the core of what I love to do. I am a storyteller myself. And I thought that podcast was a wonderful platform to share stories, not just mine, but others as well. So I was interested in podcasting from then. And when I um, Jan Paul asked me to come on as a host. I was more than excited to help a Toastmasters and be, you know, bring my passion for storytelling on board with me. So what makes a good story? I guess it's really about uh, the core values in the story, the people and their emotions that make it really, um, what shall I say, engaging to the audience uh, and how relatable it truly is to them. So the core values, the people and the emotions and how relatable it can be. The core values, the people, the emotions and the relatability. Uh, What would you say makes for a relatable story? Mm. I think it should also, um, you know, it depends on the climate. For example, if today I were to tell you a story about uh, something to do with the pandemic, not being able to meet my family, I think a lot of people can relate, Mm. you know. Uh, you know, so the context uh, uh, and the time frames that we are in, that kind of helps to anchor the audience in and relate to the characters in the story or, or anything else. It depends on who you're talking to, really. So if it's Toastmasters, maybe something about how to become persuasive speakers. Yeah. So it depends on who you talk to and what the context is and what they are really looking for. That's how you find out what's relatable to them. That's how you find out what's relatable to them. Tell me a little bit more about your journey with Toastmasters. When did you start and kind of how has your your journey come along since then? Yeah, I became a Toastmaster in 2017. I had joined my organization, UNICEF at the time, and they had their own club. And so UNICEF's Toastmaster club, it's called Global Expressions, uh, is my home club. And I've been with them since 2017. And sometime in 2019, I joined another Toastmasters Club called LACE, which stands for Ladies Advancing Communication Excellence. And uh, so the first, my home club, which is at UNICEF, is based in New York, Manhattan. And um, LACE, Ladies Advancing Communication Excellence, is based out of Brooklyn. But of course, today everything is virtual, so it doesn't really matter physically where they are. Uh, But these are the two clubs that I belong to. In 2019, I had uh, gone for the International Speech Contest. So Toastmasters holds the International Speech Contest every year, and I wanted to give it a try. It was one of the best decisions I ever made, um, because when you enroll for the contest and when you move up the levels, um, you realize that you meet more and more people. I went to more than 40 clubs that season just to practice and rehearse my speech. I connected with more people from different clubs, and uh, the overall experience was um amazing. It widened my horizons. I could appreciate the strength of Toastmasters so much more, especially being in New York City. The advantage is enormous. It was one of the best things. And that is how I ended up meeting the members of the Lace Toastmasters Club. And they encouraged me to join them. And I did. 
Um, and thanks to that experience, I know a lot more people. My network has been strengthened and widened. And I, I, you know, I recall those days as being some of the best in Toastmasters because obviously the last two years it's been, mm. uh, we've all been uh, sheltering in place and haven't gone out to too many clubs. So those days, uh, 2019, that Condes season are some of the best uh, that I cherish. Mm, mm. You mentioned a little bit about the power of building your network. Could you share a little bit about that? Oh, yeah, I think. And especially um, now that we are, uh, you know, working remotely, I'm working remotely for the past two years, I can vouch for the power of networking and social capital. And you can only build that when you meet people. I mean, I'm not saying you can only, but it's much more powerful when you know, you know, when we are talking together in the same room, sitting across from each other and building that human connection, which again comes back to storytelling. Mm -hmm. Storytelling is all about building human connections. And when you are networking with people, when you, you know, you're telling them stories. And I think uh, that was also part of the, the speech that I was preparing with. It was very powerful. It helped to build connections. A lot of people would come up to me after the speech emotionally moved, telling them how much it was inspiring mm. them. And I could mm. see for for myself the power of telling stories. Actually, in 2019, when I did enter the speech contest, I was not so much a storyteller. I still hadn't started my podcast. Um, but that one speech, then the story within it, helped me see how much it helped to connect. Uh, because even after the contest was over, you know, I would run into people from clubs who'd come up to me and speak to me. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. One speech, five minutes on the stage can give you such a long lasting impact with your audience. So the power of networks, again, it can help you in so many other ways, right? And I think it's important to develop that. Part of being a Toastmaster is the advantage you get. It uh, it opens up these pathways, so to speak, to other clubs and people uh, with whom you might share passions, not just for public speaking, but other areas of your life. So I definitely vouch for networking. So let's pretend like we're speaking to a future Toastmaster that's listening to this podcast episode. And they've now learned from you the power of stories. They've learned from you the power of networking. What about economic impact? Does becoming better at storytelling and building a network have any sort of economic or career impact on an individual? I think definitely at work, um, you know, I, I work in IT and uh, IT is not necessarily known for being very exciting. We can be very technical. Uh, people get into the nuts and bolts of stuff, but they may not be able to make it sound as exciting to the end user or the layman. Right. And one of the things that um, I did last year was I, I was actually presenting at international conferences um, and I work in an area called enterprise architecture. Mm. It's pretty technical. Um, but my topic at the conference was the power of storytelling and enterprise architecture. Mm. And I showed them the formula for storytelling, A, as writers and you know directors and script writers come up with, and how you can use that formula adapted for enterprise architecture. So how a very technical group of people could use storytelling to convince their audience to sell a concept or an idea at work and yet come, come across as being relatable. That's an awesome personal example. And you don't, I, I'll have to admit that when I think of IT and uh, infrastructure and technology, the first thing that comes to mind is definitely not story. And so I'm, I'm really amazed by how you're bridging those two worlds together. I think that's very powerful. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think when we say technology and storytelling or presentations, the first name that comes to mind for me, at least, is Steve Jobs. Mm -hmm. And he did a fantastic job of never bringing up anything technical in his presentations. Yeah. Kept it super simple, kept it clean and kept it and made it look so attractive to people who wouldn't understand that technology. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the power of storytelling that we should try and uh, aspire for. I see what you're saying, because there's the you're going back to relatability, one of those core tenets that you were talking about, um, network, connection. I can, I can see how this is shaping up. And, and, and I think that this podcast is a natural progression for you. I, I think you're going to do quite well with it. Can you tell me a little bit about your hopes or expectations for where this podcast goes under your new leadership, under your, your, you coming on as a new host? Yeah, sure. You know, when I was speaking with Ian Paul and I asked him what was his vision for, um, you know, the podcast uh, since it's been running for a season already, 
Um, what he said is really to bring on Toastmasters, you know, members and share their stories. And that's when I felt really happy because I am happy. That's what I love to do. Hear other people's stories and share it. And so I see this as an opportunity to understand the journey of these Toastmasters, mm -hmm. you know, what brought them into Toastmasters, what they took out of it and how we can help our audience who's listening to us, uh, you know, A, to come into Toastmasters and B, build those uh, storytelling skills. Now, what about the listeners? What can they come to expect from this new season of the podcast? Yeah, like I said, I think uh, what they can expect out of this is definitely a lot of rich stories, engaging conversations with uh, Toastmasters and what they can bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And probably I'm hoping out of every episode, they can take away one or two new things that they've never heard of before. Mm -hmm. So something of learning value in every episode. Something of learning value in every episode. So I know this is a bit of an off-topic question, but do you have any particular process in extracting learning value from a conversation or from a story? Ah, I think um, one of my skills in this area is curiosity. Mm. It's simply to sit back and listen to my, so, you know, my guest, and uh, the people generally offer more information uh, than you need to ask for, but they do. And that is enough to ask further questions. So there's a bit of an investigative journalist in me mm -hmm. and uh, that com coupled with the curiosity to ask more questions usually helps me to elicit responses from them that can be of value to both me and our listeners. Now, what makes a good question? Because you have this, this curiosity of an investigative reporter and an investigative reporter asks great questions. What makes a great question? I, you know, that's that's a brilliant question. Um, and I think your answers will depend on the quality of your questions also, right? Um, the question should really tap into the deeper narrative there, right? The why behind whatever the uh, whatever actions the 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 speaker or the um the guest is sharing about, you know, to understand what is driving them, to understand what are their greatest fears or what are their greatest desires. Because both of both of these factors drive people forward, and and you know try to kind of get into their um, uh, into the mind of the of the listener and their psyche and understand them a little bit more. So questions that are um, uh, what shall I say? The questions that are that are framed in such a manner as to enter their psyche and understand a little bit more of what drives them. So some so good questions enter the psyche of the mind. And you can understand a little bit more about what drives the person, what they're afraid of, what they desire, and kind of going beneath the surface a little bit more. So let's take that journey together. How, you know, sure. what could you possibly be afraid of with this podcast? What could go wrong? Oh, what could go wrong with the podcast? I think um, in terms of uh, you know, I'm not too worried about the actual production of the of the podcast. What would worry me is um, uh, audience, the traffic to the podcast itself, you know, listenership, so to speak. Would our listenership drop and would we do better than we did last season? How do we improve that? Those are some of the questions I ask. I don't see us failing as much as uh, see ourselves trying something new maybe struggling at it, but also learning how to accomplish it. So how to take our listenerships to another level. And more important than that, how we can actually help, um, you know, how can those, how can that listenership translate into actions or results for the Toastmasters district? Yeah, in terms of more members joining or more members being interested in the podcast, interested in uh, playing an active role in their own clubs. Because at the end of the day, that's what this podcast is all about. Engaging more listeners, bringing in more members, and ensuring that our existing members become more active in their clubs. So those are the questions to look at and answer it. And we need to figure out a way to measure it because that's the only way we can say we have been successful or not. I wouldn't worry so much about failure. Mm. See, everyone, Anu wouldn't worry so much about failure. And I love how she masterfully crafted that response into 
now looking at the future state of where we want to go, okay, here's the worst. The worst case scenario is that this podcast loses listenership. All right, let's get that right off the table. But where do we want to go? We want to reach more listeners and more demographics for more reasons, more people that are potential Toastmasters so that they can join and start to experience the benefits of this program that Anu is talking about. So let's do that. I mean, I suppose. Yeah. Go ahead. And, you know, as, as I hear you speak, it sounds more like we're brainstorming this. But those questions uh, that I just listed out, those questions should be our uh, guiding North Star. You know, mm-hmm. we, we take those questions and see how do we improve the, the pro- podcast in order to address those questions. Right. And when we do that, I think listenership will take care of itself. Listenership will take care of itself if we're focused on improving the podcast and asking those questions. And I think you said something really, really poignant, which was um, it needs to be measured. And when it's measured, then you can see if you're successful or not. So on this kind of baseline, where would you hope? I I know it's an interesting question, but where do you – where do you hope this podcast goes? What kind of results do you do you hope happen? Well, I, I hope that people, you know, sit up and take notice of District, District 46. Uh, the memberships, if it goes up, that's a great uh, win for us. Uh, more importantly, if people say we also want to start our own podcast, mm-hmm. say for our clubs or for our organizations, that would be a huge measure of success for us with the podcast itself, right? People feeling confident enough to take on this endeavor at their levels. Um, And that would be something to look out for. Now, is there anything I haven't asked, anything that you have on your mind that you'd like to share before we wrap up today's episode? For the podcast? No, I don't think so. I'm blanking out. Awesome, awesome. That means we just about covered it. And everyone is going to get to know you more over time through these episodes. It's been a privilege and an honor to join you today as your guest host. And I'm really excited about this baton getting passed from you, from the past host, Scott Mason, now to Anu. Congratulations. I think you're going to do an exceptional job with this podcast. Any closing thoughts? I just want to say that Scott Mason is a wonderful host and I have pretty big shoes to fill. So I hope I can do a decent job. And thank you, Chris, so much for this uh, interview. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us on Transformational Pathways. If you enjoyed today's episode or got anything out of it, please rate, review, and subscribe. And if you're interested in learning more about Toastmasters District 46, check out the link in the show notes below.